Hello there golfers, I'm 5 Star Grog Splash and this is episode 5 of the How To Turbo Golf Racing series. We've had a look at most areas of the game, but there's a huge part that we've only lightly touched on, power cores. It's such a big topic, I've decided that it needs to be two videos, so in this video I'll talk about the cores and what they all do, then in the next and last video of this fundamental series, I'll talk about some of the different pairings of cores that you might use and why. There are a lot of cores, so I've split these into a few basic categories, movement, ball, effect cancelling, and meme. So without any further ado, let's get started with the movement cores. The first movement core is double dash. This passive core allows us to use one extra dash per glide. As we know, you can do dash shots and faster movement with dash, but to use double dash to its full potential, you'll need to learn the Yagmi dash, or chain dashing, making it tougher to learn. I'll link a tutorial to this by Redox in the description. This is a good core to learn with, but eventually you'll want to graduate to something faster. Hothead is the next passive movement core and is very simple to explain. Your boost is boostier than normal boost, giving you a higher maximum speed and acceleration. The cost of this is your boost drains at double speed, so to get the most out of it you'll have to have a good command of movement to make sure that you've got enough boost to exploit it. Hothead helps right from the tee off as you'll get to the ball faster and hit your first shot harder and the higher maximum speed means that you'll be faster in a lot of situations. Hothead is a core you can use right away but you'll probably find it easier to learn at a slower pace and pick this up later. Hyperglider is the third and last of the passive movement cores. Hyperglider will boost your speed a lot while gliding, so much that you can go 132 speed sustained downhill. You pay for this with boost, which automatically depletes while glide is active, draining very quickly. Hyperglider is incredibly powerful, especially on downhill maps. Consistency can be an issue, as the high speed will mean an exaggerated spin effect on your ball hits. Similar to Hothead, Hyperglider is a great core, but unless you already know what you're doing, I'd avoid it for now. Active cores are your chance to choose a specific playstyle as the abilities are highly varied with a mix of risk and reward. Quick Flip is the first active core we're talking about today and the last of the movement cores. When you press your core button with Quick Flip, your car will flip, yes, quickly, and in any direction. Doing this forward gets you a massive temporary speed increase to around 140, plus the boost in shield benefits of a normal flip. Because Quick Flip increases our speed so much, there is extra risk, especially if you use it to hit the ball directly. Quick Flip is an A plus core, but since it's the least forgiving of all the active cores, I really can't recommend it to a beginner. Ball interaction cores make up the rest of the active cores, starting with Shock. Shock should probably be the first core you'll unlock since you get it for achieving just 3 stars in the time trial mode. Shock lets you send out a pulse of energy which can push the ball forward a short distance with just a 3 second cooldown. You can use Shock for pushing the ball forward for better shot position, correcting your miss hits, faster finishes, and at the top end, air dribbling. Shock is one of those easy to pick up cores that you can't make too much of a mess with and as you get better you can use it to develop consistent, repeatable runs at a fast pace. Its low risk will reward a conservative playstyle, preferring to keep the ball near shock range rather than blasting it too far ahead. For consistency runs, shock competes for favour with my personal favourite core, Magnet. Magnet will pull your ball towards your car in a straight line, meaning you can use it for ground power shots, crazy aerial shots, getting that ring you just missed, recovery loop the loops, and correcting your finishes by pulling the ball into the hole. But you'll need to know when to magnet since it has the longest cooldown of all the cores at 10 long seconds. As you've seen, Magnet is very versatile and you can stick to using it for correcting mistakes until you're confident enough to aim for the fancy stuff. There are opportunities for spectacular plays using Magnet, but I can recommend this to any player because there are so many low risk uses for it. Sticky is the next active core and probably the easiest to use. 
Once activated, it covers your car in a sticky green slime, letting you grab your ball and carry it for 3 seconds, with a cooldown of 8 seconds before you can stick again. By pressing the core button again while your ball's stuck, you'll release it, though if it's on the side it can spin out. Sticky is most commonly used for putting, since you can grab your ball while near the hole, turn to face the hole, and release for a low finish. Sticky is a good core to learn the game as it's very easy to use, but there will be a hard limit on how fast you can go with it on most maps. Stomp is the next active core, which lets you pound a massive shockwave into the ground, sending your ball flying in a straight line. It also gives you a huge speed boost, similar to a mega boost canister every time you use it. Given the cooldown is only 3-4 to four seconds, this can be very powerful. You can use Stomp to cover long straights quickly and use the momentum from the Stomp to kickstart your chase or you can make some insane finishes. You have to line up your shots well and time your Stomps due to the lack of curve but if you can hit this you'll be able to set up fast repeatable runs on certain maps but might find it less useful on some of the more curvy holes. Ice Lock is the last ball interaction core to look at for this video and for me the least powerful. Ice Lock will freeze your ball in place for around half a second before dropping with a 5 second cooldown. I honestly haven't spent too much time playing with Ice Lock, but its biggest use for me is correcting your overhits by freezing them in place and letting you set up your next shot. It can also be used for keeping the ball on the inside of corners, but this can be done with any setup by just using movement and shot control so it feels like there are better options available. All the remaining cores are passive, so I'll be a bit quicker in just explaining what they do and if they're any good. Next are the effect cancelling cores, starting with Sandmaster and Rough Rider. I'm going to combine these two as the only difference is what surface they work on. These cores allow your car to travel at normal fairway speeds while driving through those terrains. As I mentioned in the level elements video, we normally want to be avoiding these terrains altogether and since we can glide or dash over it, I'd only recommend having these equipped while learning the ropes. Straight and Steady or Straight Shot is the third of the effect cancelling cores and this time we're cancelling Curve. I used Straight Shot with Magnet when I first started playing and coming from Rocket League found it was easy to relate the shooting to that game without the curve. However, this is Turbo Golf Racing, not Rocket League, so if you're the type of player who likes to get good from the start, I'd say you should try to learn Curve right away. You can be fast with straight shot, but with a variety of holes and some having very tight corners, it can be a limiting factor further up the skill levels. The last types of cores are my meme cores. These, in my opinion, don't help you that much at all, and in some cases make the game harder for little benefit. Big ball makes your ball bigger. Yep, that's it. It's easier to aim at a bigger ball I suppose, so this is something you can use during the beginning hours of your playtime. Your ball will float higher and roll less on landings, but again this just makes the game a tiny bit easier. Big ball is the second least meme of the meme cores and is a valid choice for when you're just starting out. Small ball predictably does the opposite meaning that if you're looking for a ball that's harder to hit, doesn't go in the air without a pitch shot, but goes a bit further forward, small ball is the core to use. Small ball is one of those cores that seems like it should be better in some way because it's harder to play with, but when playing there's no benefit that it gives you that you can't get with better shot selection. I'm so sorry Mets. Big Shot is the least meme of the meme cores since it does have a few legitimate uses for world records in time trials. The reason I have it here though is just because for general play you'll find it much more useful to control your hits. Curveball has become a known phrase worldwide meaning a difficult or unexpected situation. And that's what trying to play with the curveball feels like. Except you're the one throwing the curveballs for yourself. Your mishits will be exaggerated to hell and the benefits you might think you can exploit on tight corners you'll lose with bad lines on the straights. This one is a big avoid. Spring ball is the last core and that's not an accident. Spring ball will make your ball bounce more against any surface. This generally makes it harder to play since you'll often need to hit the ball from the air which can be harder to control. And that's the end of this first part discussing cores. 
in the next video I'll be suggesting a few core combinations you can start out with and then a few more advanced ones that you can graduate to later. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.